So this video is covering a new character I'm creating for um, my game I'm working on. The workflow that I'm using in this video isn't typical. And part of it, it has to do with the fact that I'm trying to see what works in terms of what I can use LLMs for or ChatGPT or Claude. And my main thing is, is I'm experimenting with different workflows coming from the perspective of a solo developer. So this model that you're seeing me model here is an example of that where I'm modeling it in a way where it's not as necessarily efficient as it can be, but I'm doing it in a very speed optimized way. Because I'm approaching this project as a sole developer, I've decided that in this model's case, I'm not going to create bespoke or unique textures. You notice that this model is using palette textures. Basically, I'm not modeling first and then texturing second. In this case, no new textures are being added. I'm just sampling one texture and I'm cutting the model however way I need it to be cut in order to shape the shapes that I want. And you'll see as I'm working on this model, I'll adjust the shape and if I need, like for example, you see how I added the specular highlight in the eye. That's basically a, a mesh that I cut up and then I set it to white. Whereas normally I would paint that in into the texture itself and not add extra geometry. And yeah, so um, you'll notice that in the bottom right corner, I have the finalized model in the game and it's in motion. And one thing to keep in mind is this model itself isn't using animation that is moving the vertices. This isn't like a workflow that you would find in a traditional studio where you might have hundreds of people working on the same game. In this case, I'm trying to find a workflow that works really well for me as a solo developer working on this project. So the animation itself is super stylized and modular, and it's I'm not actually animating the mesh itself. In Unity, you can create empty groups and you can put your character inside of those groups. I am animating the group itself and not the character. I'm just squashing, stretching, and moving it up and down. And you can swap. The cool thing about doing it this way is you can swap in any character you want. So this motion that I have on this character is not unique to this character. I can I can swap out any characters I want into this group that has this motion on it, and I'll get this motion on any character that gets dropped into the uh, holder of the character that's being animated. This is nice because I'm just one person. I don't have time to... If, if there were like 100 characters, I wouldn't have to create unique animations for the hop. And in this case, this hop animation, I'm going to be using for the movement. Um, but a lot of this is speculation from, from my part, because I'm guessing um, once I get to that point where I'm actually seeing the character move in game, I'll have a better idea of what's working and what isn't. But this is the first character for this game that I'm working on. And uh, yeah, you'll see uh, now I've added some horns. I'm adding the back spikes. And because I have so much experience with 3D art, I'm concepting in 3D. Normally, you'd probably want to concept this stuff out, but because I have so much familiarity with 3D art and modeling, I'm just doing it all in Maya. And yeah, so the main thing is in this game, it's purely unlit. So that means that I don't have to worry about like um, lighting specular highlights, normal maps or anything. So what I really wanted to do is create the most aesthetically pleasing, but simple art style that I can think of. And the main idea here is that because my time is limited, I only have like a few hours a day to, if I'm lucky, a few hours a day to actually work on this. And on top of this is like, I like making YouTube videos. So that takes a bit of, a, of my time. So it's like, a lot of this approach to modeling is all about limitation. And I think that's what makes it also fun too, um, because I've worked professionally uh, as a 3D artist for a while. And it, like, I don't get to make stuff like this. It's usually more double A 
AAA workflow stuff. So this is a lot more relaxing, chill. Like it's not very stressful creating stuff like this. I don't run into as many technical challenges. Um, in this case, the reason why I like it for this is because my main focus is on the coding design AI stuff. And a lot of the AI stuff is like speculation. And from my perspective that I'm just testing out my workflow. A lot of this workflow isn't something that you would do in studio because you in studio, you have access to developers, uh, product managers, just there's a huge team there to support you. But in my case is I just want to make sure that I don't get too bogged down on the art stuff. So that's why this aesthetic is like super simple from the visual standpoint, but I think it's aesthetically pleasing. I mean, this is the art direction side of me where I'm like, you know what? It looks good. As long as the gameplay uh, feels great to play, then this art is sufficient from my perspective. Like I like this kind of art. I know it's not necessarily for everybody. And for now, my theme for these creatures or characters is like they're they are dinosaur theme. Um, I, like I like dinosaurs. I don't see them often. That's what I'm going with. And one thing you'll see here is so when you model something, uh, traditionally you then rig it and then animate it. Then you take the animation, import it in Unity, and hook all of it up. In my case, I want to try something different. I want to create a modular script using AI that um, gets me my simple motion that I want. And the main idea to think about it is I want this character to go up and down. Um, and then if you've taken basic animation, you would know um, squash and stretch. So up and down, when, when you're going up, I want you to stretch the the prefab or think about it as like a ball. Um, so when you're going up, stretch. When you're all the way up to the top, I just want it to be neutral, no, no squash or stretch. When you're going down, in my case, I'm adding a stylized stretch. And then when you hit the floor, I want you to squash and then just rinse and repeat. And in my case, that's what I'm attempting to do here with Claude. And the prompt is long. Um, I'm not going to bother uh, bother you with reading it, but the idea is that here's me prompting Claude to create this stylized effect that I want. It's super simple. And one thing that, oh, another thing that I forgot to add is, so we talked about the squash and stretch and up and down, but I also wanted to rotate side to side. There's one thing that I've noticed Claude struggling with which ended up leading me to canceling my subscription because I found another LLM that actually works. Claude struggled with maintaining my squash and stretch re requests. Like, you know, I talked to you about in the beginning about how I wanted to stretch on the way up and stretch on the way down. And then I wanted also squash on contact. And I tried so many times with Claude and uh, it's like, I'm, you see here, I'm, I'm hitting the purple text where it's basically saying I'm hitting my limit. And I'm like, this is super simple. And this is where I go to Gemini instead, told Claude, okay, just summarize everything we've been trying to do, right? Because it's very clear that I kept going in a loop with Claude. Well, it'll fix one thing and then break the thing that it um, had right. And I, it did that like... 10 times. I'm not going to show it all in the video because it was, it was actually quite frustrating because I'm just like, hey, all caps, like um, experimenting with like, uh, if I say I'm going to go to a different LLM, would it do better results? And it turned out, no, it didn't. So in the end, I just asked it to summarize what it's trying to do. And I took that information, that prompt, and I pasted it into Gemini and it, it resolved the issue. 